Saturn is almost entirely hydrogen and helium, but it does have trace amounts of other chemicals, including water. Recently, one of my subscribers brought to my attention that there was actually quite a lot of water in Saturn liquid form. In today's video, we're going to explore that idea that could be a game changer for exploration of the huge amber world and use it also as an excuse to talk about the beautiful gas giant. So let's get to it. When we look at Saturn, we're actually seeing the upper cloud tops of Saturn's atmosphere. These are made of frozen crystals of ammonia. But beneath this upper cloud layer, astronomers think there is a lower cloud layer made of ammonia and hydrosulfide and water. In these lower layers, where pressures drop between 10 and 20 bar, and temperatures that range between 270 and 330 Kelvin, Saturn contains a region of water droplets. Unfortunately though, we're not actually talking about beautiful oceans of water, but we are talking about a realistic possibility of easy access to water for any explorers venturing down into the depths. Another positive is that the Saturnian radio belts are generally much weaker than those on Jupiter and do not emit much microwave radiation and Saturn's magnetic field is smaller than Jupiter's. Unfortunately, that's where the good news ends, because although Saturn's magnetic field is smaller than Jupiter's, it's still 578 times as powerful as Earth's. High energy particles cause weathering of the surfaces of the icy moons and splutter water products and oxygen from them. Anyone venturing inside the gas world itself, unfortunately then, is subjected to vast amounts of radiation. Now we did mention that the water would potentially be in liquid form, but it wouldn't be the only thing that could be in liquid form and indeed rain on Saturn. In fact, Saturn's atmosphere is relatively poor in helium compared to Jupiter's. Scientists think that it cooled faster than Jupiter after initial formation, and then helium droplets formed when the temperature of the atmosphere dropped below 15 Kelvin. These droplets have been falling down into the core of Saturn, heating it up and generating the heat ever since. So helium rain on Saturn remains a realistic possibility. In 2004, scientists estimated that the core must be 9 to 22 times the mass of Earth, which corresponds to a diameter of around 25,000 kilometers. It's interesting, isn't it, that these gas worlds we now actually really believe are just rocky worlds themselves, but rocky worlds with vast atmospheres, with cores heavy enough to hold on to hydrogen and helium, which escapes the grasp of smaller bodies like the Earth. Saturn is a planet that also has seasons, and it's really beautiful as the way the rings tilt over the process of its 29.5 year orbit. Saturn's orbit is actually slightly elliptical, and it means that the distances between it and the Sun can vary by as much as one astronomical unit. Perihelion, or closest approach, is at 9 astronomical units, whereas aphelion is almost 10. Now another problem with venturing inside the gas world itself is that wind speeds on Saturn are the second fastest in the solar system planets after Neptune. Interestingly, Saturn is the only planet that has hurricanes like Earth, where we can see the eye of the hurricane, and indeed NASA reported in November 2006 that Cassini had observed a hurricane-like storm locked to the South Pole and had a clearly defined eye wall. But that's where the similarities end. Voyager data indicated peak easterly winds of 500 meters per second, or 1,800 kilometers per hour. So any ideas of floating balloon city, like perhaps those seen on Venus, seem at least for now to be probably ruled out. Temperatures, pressures and materials that characterize Saturn are most likely extreme and volatile. Let's have a listen then to what we might really experience inside the clouds of Saturn. Like Jupiter, Saturn radiates out more energy than it draws in from the Sun. In fact, Saturn radiates 2.3 times more energy than it receives, and its seasons last around 7 years each. We're familiar perhaps now with the imaging of the North Polar region and its beautiful hexagonal structure, but Hubble Space Telescope imaging of the South Polar region interestingly indicated the presence of a jet stream, but without a strong polar vortex, nor any hexagonal standing waves. Indeed, polar aurorae occur when charged particles spiral into the planet's atmosphere along magnetic field lines. On Earth, those charged particles come from solar wind, but Cassini showed us that at least some of Saturn's aurorae are like Jupiter's and are largely unaffected by the solar wind. 
Instead, these different types of aurora are caused by a combination of particles ejected from Saturn's moons and Saturn's magnetic field for rapid rotation rate. However, the non-solar originating aurorae are not completely understood yet. If we look inside Saturn, it's believed it's similar in makeup to its larger brother Jupiter. In Epic Journeys to Jupiter, we looked at the internal structure of Jupiter, so don't forget to check that video out, and I'll link it above. While there may be no liquid water oceans, it is likely that there are metallic hydrogen ones. Could life have formed deep down inside the planet's interior? It's a place, while remaining short of being a star, black hole, or neutron star, could easily be described as one of the weirdest in the universe. We talk of the beauty of Saturn's ring system, but we seem to forget the beautiful colours of Saturn itself. Bright yellow, saffrons, ambers and golds give way to beautiful oranges, corals, tangerines and apricots. Deeper browns, umbers, coffees and chocolates finish off the masterpiece. Saturn has now been visited by four space probes, Pioneer 11, the two voyages at Cassini. Dragonfly is set to launch in 2026, but this mission is aimed primarily at Titan rather than the gas giant itself. The continued exploration of Saturn is still the, however considered to be a viable option for NASA as part of their ongoing New Frontiers program of missions. NASA previously requested for plans forward for a mission to Saturn that included the Saturn Atmospheric Entry Probe. Given the volatile nature of Saturn's weather, it will be difficult to colonise, but the discovery of large amounts of water in liquid solution are always a welcome benefit. It's not out of the question that not just its wonderful moon Titan will become a host to human life. But maybe one day even the planet itself. Thanks for watching and thanks to Top Secret for sharing this idea. I'd like to bring other subscribers ideas to life also so don't forget to mention them in the comments below. Take care of yourself and take care of your friends and family. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and add a like if you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.